Hello there, my name is Corey Durbin, CEO of Shared Health Alliance, and I'd like to welcome you to Running Eyes, a podcast where we take a meaningful, deep dive into the relationships, strategies, and global mission of ASH to change healthcare and change lives. Welcome back to Running Eyes. Uh, my guest today is Paul Pruitt. Paul is the CEO of Sharks. And this, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Uh, it's uh, one I've been looking forward to for a long time. We'll get into more about who Paul is and, and our connection as we go along. But Paul, I just want to say hi. How are you today, buddy? I'm doing great, Corey. Thanks for having me. Yeah, glad to, glad to be with you today. Uh, Paul is one of my business partners. We own uh, two companies. One is called Shared Health Alliance and the other is called Shark. Some of you may know that. Others might, that might be a new revelation. And Paul is the CEO of Sharks. Uh, I am the CEO of Shared Health Alliance, so my roles in the highway I stay in tends to be more how to help uh, act in the vendor consulting pass- capacity to Alliance for Shared Health to the 501c3 health sharing ministry. And uh, there are so many synergies between Sharks and Shared Health Alliance, but they're really two separate and distinct entities. So uh, Sharks is an extremely important aspect of what Ash does every day, and Paul's instrumental in that. And so that's a little bit more background on on how we got to where we got but Paul and I have known each other for a long time Paul when did when did we first start working together do you remember the year it was 2007 2007 so I, I, it's it's always interesting I think when you think about how relationships come together and the just the web we weave that was uh at the time you had not yet not too long ago had graduated from from university, from college, I think St. Louis University, if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. and uh, had been working at a financial services firm, great background, educational background. But I think at that time, you were working uh, also at, at uh, Macaroni Grill, weren't you? That's right. Yeah, I was, I had, I was, I was doing both at the time. <laughs> I think I recall you saying you were just not loving what you were doing, bored in the financial services world. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is that uh, is that an accurate statement? How did you end up kind of in that macaroni grill realm? Yep. So I had uh, graduated with a finance and pre med degree and kind of went went the the financial services route after college and was at a great firm and uh, some things had happened where they were they had moved out of the St. Louis area and so I had to change places that I was I was operating out of and. And that was just not a good change. And so, uh, you know, in, in that world, you you know, you, you have to kill to eat. Um, and so, if you weren't if you weren't actively selling constantly, you you know, you weren't having a good revenue. So that's kind of what drove me to to find something that was going to pay the bills. <laughs> uh, and so that's yeah. kind of how I ended up in that in that role. Well, I, I love that because I I don't I can't probably stop and think how many people I've said Paul is one of if not the smartest guy I know and there's so many times you know we tend to judge books by their cover and and we I think there are a lot of times you have to take a step back to take steps forward and there are a lot of people that work for our companies that have you know spent time doing jobs that wouldn't have been there. Hey, I'm doing this the rest of my life, but hey, let me take a step back. And uh, we were so fortunate to meet. Although I know uh, you ended up taking that CFO role for our previous company that we sold back in 2012. And I mean, you and I didn't always get along perfectly, did we? Uh, we did not. We we were both much younger than in those days. <laughs> Well, you for sure were. I'm obviously older than you, but, but uh, yeah, I look back and I I am very grateful that we had stayed connected. You were an integral part of what we had developed at our old company, and you know we all mature a lot. Um, well, hopefully, we're all constantly learning and growing. And uh, I mean, you knew me back then, and you know I I, I can stand up and say back then you know i think i thought because i was the owner of a company everyone should treat me with this measure of respect and do these things that i say uh because i i'm an owner well that's just you know a young naive way of thinking and i mean we we definitely butted heads back (laughs) back then for sure oh absolutely and uh, i had my fair share of holding ground and and there was several times where things got got heated between us and i'm glad that we've moved past that (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, so we we learn and grow, which is great. And you were so instrumental in what we've done. And uh, now as we, after we sold that company, we worked together for a little bit while longer. And then you went on your own and you were doing some consulting living down in Tennessee. And now kind of getting back into the sharks picture, I had reached out to you, I want to say 2016-ish, uh, correct me if the time frame is wrong, but I said, you know, I think we've got this idea where we can really help people that can't afford medications. Do you recall um, sort of that, that initial outreach to you and what you were doing on the consulting side with large groups and how that uh, conversation developed? Uh, absolutely. And, and, and that wasn't the first time that you, you're our relationship together is always kind of, Hey, I have this idea. And some of them are great. And some of them, you know, Hey, let's massage that a bit. Uh, but when you called me with that, it was one of the fireworks went off. And, you know, mm -hmm. when working with employers, as you know, you know, medications become such a burden that you really, no one really had a good solution for And when, when you brought the idea of, Hey, I, I think there's a way that we can take what we're doing on, our health sharing part of the equation and deploy that for an employer audience, you know, it was, uh, you know, it was one of those light bulb moments that went off. And, and I think I had a, a very good idea of how to uh, deploy and create, you know, the, the right compliance aspects to make that type of item possible. Uh, and so that was, you know, I think you had taken the, those recommendations to heart and kind of started the journey of how do we get do that but that conversation was very instrumental. Yeah, and it, one of the things that dawned on me at the time is we we know each other, of course, and we hadn't always had, uh, you know, didn't always delve into each other's personal life a ton, but you also brought up uh, your, your boys and that they had some medical challenges, special needs challenges. Would, would you talk about that a little bit? Because uh -huh. for me, it was, I think it's a significant hot button in the development of sharks. I think... Our, my background and really working directly with employers and their health plans and kind of building it from scratch because that was my that was my passion and specialty was was unbundling mm -hmm. the the health plan experience and you know along the way as you mentioned I, you know I started the family I moved to Nashville and you know at some point I think in the 2015 kind of at, at 2016 you know my oldest son and then my my we were pregnant at the time then my second son, both got diagnosed with the same rare, rare condition. And so, you know, now we're dealing with, well, how, what do we do? How do we manage this? And, and, and their medications are today $75,000 a month for each of them. And so mm. my wife and I were going down this journey of, well, how, where do we go from here? And we asked for help and the system doesn't really help you. The insurance company doesn't help you. Okay. The hospitals right. don't help you. And so it's you got to figure it out on your own. And that's one of the things that as we started figuring things out, it was like, wow, there's other, there are ways to get help, but you have really have to know where to look. And most people don't, don't really understand or have that same type of aptitude to find those solutions for themselves. And they're, and they just get stuck and lost in the, and, and, and healthcare eats them up. Yeah. So, uh, the, the condition cystinosis. Am I saying it right? Cystinosis? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a so it's oh yeah, it's a ahead. rare yeah it, it's a rare disease. I had never heard of it before either. Um, it's only about six hundred people in the U.S. have that. About two thousand worldwide, and and that's really got my eyes open to all the various types of rare diseases that are out there. Most you've never heard of before, and you know we love the fact that there's medications that treat them. So my boys are doing great; they're thriving. Um, but the price tag on these is just astronomical. Yeah, and but if we could talk about just the family situation a little bit, because I think a lot of people that listen, you know, when you're when you're sitting behind a microphone or whatever, you, you you relate to me. You relate better when your story is real. And I know that that when we all go through these challenges, it it can hit us very hard and uh, kind of knock the wind out of our sails just a little bit. What was that like for you? And, and I know you're such a researcher and a learner. And when you when you kind of dig into something and say, I'm going to go after this, I'm going to figure it out. What was it like for you all as a family when you understood sort of what the what cystinosis meant potentially? And can you just talk a little bit about how you guys have dealt with that as a family? And I think you have a great point. Most people don't have a framework to truly understand 
what it means to manage, you know, or work in a case where you're, where you are dealing with, or your family is dealing with a chronic condition that needs a lot of support. I mean, so, you know, that was one of the, that was one of the most, what I might think disappointing experiences with what the healthcare system that we were kind of a part of at the time with the doctors and the hospitals is how lacking they are in providing the support because you're just trying to get through today um, mm-hmm. and you know they're kind of talking at you instead of talking to you and so between my, my me and my wife who happens to be a nurse I mean we we have a ba- about as good of a background as any to really get through this in spite of those challenges but it was difficult I mean she she dug in we we both you know, research and said, well, what, what information is out there? And some of it was pretty scary. Um, but luckily we've got a great foundation of other family members that really kind of took us under their wing and said, Hey, I got you. And we've been been able to do that for other families as they've been diagnosed, because that's, that was really what helped us cope with and get through and feel some semblance of confidence that, you know, we'll, we'll make it through today is, is having other people to to root in and that have been down this before us to kind of show us the way. And here's, here's what you do. Here's who you talk to. Here's the right doctors that know this condition. You know, here's mm-hmm. the medications that you, that you should probably be on. Uh, Cause most of the, even the doctors, you know, these are rare diseases. They don't understand what's going on. They may have seen this once ever in their whole life. And, you know, so that's the challenge is the system itself is kind of winging it, you know, a, a, as you go. Yeah. Well, I, I- I think that what really resonates for me is you talk about the support and the effort and just kind of that that you've got to go down a fairly, well, even a, an unknown path to figure out how to do the things that you need to do to support your boys. And knowing that one of the joys that I have every day, just sitting back on the Shared Health Alliance side is seeing some of the reviews that come in from the Sharks team. And it seems like what you and Leslie Hunsell have done, who just, you guys do an incredible job running the Sharks side, is you've built this team that now understand the support that it takes and that they're able to take people down this maze without them having to necessarily figure it out on their own. Am I, is that a fair statement and can that's, maybe expand on that? Yeah, that's actually a perfect, I mean, I, I, when I think through a, each interaction, I, you know, I always put myself on the patient side. I think, how would I want my wife and my kids and myself to be treated in this experience? And I want to make sure we're, we have a framework to understand you know, these, this is difficult on a good day. And how can we make this simpler for that person? How can we listen and hear what they're saying? They're calling sometimes, you know, they're, they're frustrated because everything makes things difficult. You, I feel like my wife is a glorified babysitter against the pharmacies filling the medications and doctors doing things they say it say that they would do. And so this is hard. And how can we make that easier? How can we listen? And we, Hey, we hear you we understand what can we do to help you? And no one else says that. And so that's such a refreshing, wow, somebody cared and somebody listened. And just that item, that's just that act makes the, the largest difference in someone's day. What is it um, about the pharmacies or their responses? And maybe it's not at the, always at the pharmacy level. Um, sometimes it may be provider level. You, you could talk about it from either respect that it makes sense. But that makes a roadblock occur if that question makes sense every part of the situation is is designed it seems like it's designed to make things difficult and when you have so much to do you know the the the, a retail local pharmacy has so much to do they really can't take the time to to get through it if if they try and fill a medication and, and there's a and there's an issue they just move on. They don't stop to say, well, what's happened here? You know, they put that burden back on the patient. So now you're calling saying, well, hey, my medication's up. Well, I couldn't get it filled. Well, why not? I don't know. That's your problem. Well, now we have to call the insurance company and say, well, hey, what happened here? Oh, well, we don't know. You need to call somebody else. And then you just go down this rabbit hole and, oh, we need a prior authorization. And okay, go to my doctor. And then, oh, we'll fill it out for you. And they don't fill it out for you. And I mean, there's, and I mean, this just, the system is set up to have such volume that there's no real personal interaction. No, there's no one in the middle of this transaction saying, Hey, let me help you through this. It's all up to the patient to figure it out. And some people just don't ever figure it out. Yeah. So that I think you're describing a lot of what the role of one of our sharks advocates would be. And can, would, if that's accurate, would you walk us through just how a member or an employee of a company would interact with or engage 
with with sharks to help them um, through this whole you know maze yeah. of getting their med. Absolutely, and I think just from foundationally, just you know what sharks, what our team is really here to do is for an individual whether that's a person enrolled in a health sharing ministry or an employee at a company, you know, they are in need access to medication that they just can't afford. And that's where our team comes into play and says, Hey, how can we help you with this? How can we help you navigate through all the various items that are out there that really don't make it easy, but that's really our specialty and say, how can we, you, you need a certain medication and we want to help you through that. We want to take all the burden, you know, as much as we can from that member and let us talk to your doctor. Let us talk to the pharmacy, the manufacturer, all these various entities and, and say, let us take all that burden and you need a medication. We want to help you get it. And whatever we can do to offload that from you, whatever that happens to be, that's really where we feel like that's our job as an advocacy, as a champion for that member to say, what can we do to make this easy? And that becomes the foundation of what Sharks is really all about. And these are medications that are, we're not talking about medications that are hundreds of dollars a month. We're talking about medications that are tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars on an annual basis. It, I mean, it could be any of those. I mean, I think if you're an individual, I mean, something that's five hundred dollars might as well be a million, right? I mean, so uh, yeah, even even yeah. the even the the concept of expensive is relative to well, this indiv- to this individual five hundred dollars may be unattainable. And how can we help that person get access to a five hundred dollar drug that they can't afford? which is also important for the 5000 the 50000 the $500,000. And there are drugs that are all over that spectrum. But the reality is to the individual, they're all expensive. And that's what we want to help mm-hmm. that patient with that's in front of us to see how can we how can we help you get that med you need so that you can't afford it and you do take it and you do, you know, you are compliant with the care that you need. Yeah, that that's a great point because in the in the Alliance for Shared Health model and the health sharing model, health share entities don't share in high cost maintenance medications or uh, they, they certainly don't extend that sharing past 90 days. And in particular, Ash, Ash does not do so because these drugs are so crazy expensive. And the other side of that is what you just mentioned, which even the the um, cost of medications like a Victoza or a Humalog or what, like an Advair or something like that, mm-hmm. um, those drugs are as you said, that that can be very detrimental to to the average family. I think it. I mean, it just insulin is a great example of you know. There's so much media attention on how expensive those medications are, but if you understand, you know what what what's out there for a cash paying customer, they, they don't have to be if you know where to look. It's just most people don't know where to look, and that's what we do is help help them with that. Uh, so talk about that for just a second. Just the the knowing where to look without necessarily saying here's all of the rocks that sharks would look under but just uh, how was that whole uh, you know how how did the revelation come to you about where all these avenues would be explored and and how many different ki- type of relationships would you say are, are out there that sharks walks through and to for a member and i think that's the foundation of you know when when a member doesn't have insurance for a medication right that's really starts unlocking the doors of other things that are available. So a lot of times we can just go straight to the manufacturer and, you know, work with them and the patient to to get medications delivered at no cost. Other times we're mm. looking through, okay, well, well, is there a cash situation? You know, just like what we might find going to the doctor or getting imaging, like paying cash is off, often cheaper. Um, so if you know where to look, there's a lot of mail order solutions um, out there that are cash based that have great, you know, very affordable programs. Some of the manufacturers themselves, you know, offer you know, hey, if you need a medication, Eli Lilly has done some different things for their diabetic medications, especially in the light of COVID, uh, where, you know, hey, if you need this and you can't afford it, you know, there's a program that you can use to get that for 35 bucks or $5 or, you mm-hmm. know, that's a lot more affordable or $99 when you're used to, pay, you know, we've got folks, you know, and they say, hey, I've got uh, my wife's on this medication. Can you help me? Sure. Did you know that you could use this card and get get it and save 400 bucks a month? I had no idea. You know, it's just a matter of these things are out there. and They're not very marketed. It's difficult to get awareness. And, you know, it's just great if when when we can share that awareness with an individual, that's so rewarding. Yeah, well, access to healthcare is confusing. And 
I'll use the word health insurance for a moment is confusing. Uh, of course, health share isn't insurance, but for employer groups, that is an insurance model. And even a, an employee of, a, of an employer group that offers health insurance, their plans don't don't always cover these high cost drugs. And so being left on their own uh, would be a very scary place to be, especially if they're, they're at all like your family where you've got really high cost medication. It's like, well, what in the world am I, am I supposed to do here? So in the, if we could turn to the employer space, I think it's, let's, let's go down that road for a minute here. Uh, roughly sharks, about how many employer groups does sharks work with? Uh, currently we have about 185 unique employer groups. Okay. And those groups would be self-funded employers? Primarily. Um, not all of them are, but absolutely that creates the, what we might call the foundation of using strategies to solve problems to be self-funded really is the step you want to have for that so what's happened in the prescription universe or in maybe even the medical world with i think you could talk you could hit on some of the ivg therapy issues but just what's happened in this whole prescription space that has uh really created this bottleneck in the system or this these exorbitant costs that an employer is going oh my gosh I, I don't know how i can continue to offer benefit to my employees yeah and i think pharmacy you know has been the scapegoat and also rightfully so over the last few years um you know it didn't used to be this way and i would say over the last maybe 20 years the 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 specialized market the biologics and things of that nature have really blossomed and started maturing and there's so many medications and that's really where the pharmaceutical industry has devoted its effort its resources into bringing meds to market that they know they can make a large profit on for a very long time. And so the fact that there's more medications available and then the meds that are available keep getting more expensive each and every year. It's just this vicious cycle that gets put on the back of the employer to, to manage and to fund. And there's and everyone else in the industry, you know, the pharmaceutical companies, the pharmacy managers, the wholesalers, the pharma, like everybody in this ecosystem, you know, is profiting on this activity on the back of the employer. And that's sometimes where, you know, just the fact that there is insurance for these reoccurring expenses is part of how we got here, right? When someone else pays the bill, then it doesn't really matter what the price looks like. Um, and so the majority of medications that are that are approved nowadays are are very are, you know, several thousand, if not tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, and that just becomes an unsustainable model when you're when you're the employer really paying those bills on behalf of your employees' health plan. I mean, it's it's just an incredible burden that, you know, is not going to be solved by the insurance system because insurance is insurance for us is the work is not a good vehicle to handle known recurring expenses. And that's the reason mm -hmm. why the health share model doesn't cover those is because they're known recurring expensive and insurance isn't designed for that. You know, auto insurance doesn't cover known reinsuring, you know, known recurring expenses. Those are liabilities. And we really want to look at this from a procurement perspective. All right, how do we buy better? not how do we get discounts? And that's the difference in the philosophy of how do we solve this problem? Because it doesn't get it solved if we just rely on the insurance market or the insurance entities that have an interest in these items happening in the first place. Yeah, what you said there really kind of hit home. It's not a perspective that I had considered. And it's really true that you know you, when we buy homeowner's insurance or car insurance, we're really insuring for that one time sudden disaster or high cost bill because of a wreck or a fire or you know a f flood or whatever some some catastrophic event and that was really what health insurance and the idea behind having healthcare access was for and we've gotten away from that and saying well that insurance company should pay for my xyz that i'm getting every month and you're right that's just become a bill with as you and i know Run when we're, you're trying to run a, a business, and now I'm talking about the employer groups that sharks work with. There's all these other external pressures on your company as it is, and then you've got the unknown that hits what becomes the known of these monthly high cost drugs that can be hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars a year. Absolutely, and that those are the things that we see day in and day out. And the the unfortunate part is those middle market or smaller employers are so much more sensitive to 
that employee because you know we love that they we love the fact that medication exists we want the patient to take it but the pricing just makes no sense for the value that it creates and so it, it's such a burden you know if you think about a drug that might be seventy thousand a year or you know we we got we worked on one two months ago that was 2.3 million dollars a year you know so these are mm. things that are real wow. dollars and you know an employer sometimes says you know i don't know that i can stay in business if i if if this is still on my health plan what do i do please help me well, uh, well i think that's one of the things that i particularly love about sharks is you, it, you're we're not as a company saying to a member of ash or an employee of an employer group no you you don't have access to that we're saying let's redirect how you get it and make sure you get what we need because we know you need that you know as well as anybody when mm -hmm. somebody needs a high cost drug if you can't get it, it it's could be life or death of course so these are um, absolutely essential so in that process and putting you a little on the spot here because i don't know if this is something you've analyzed you probably have but is there an average amount uh, either percentage wise or from an roi perspective that shark saves saves an employer group on the their medication spend or their prescription spend? When we look at kind of an average, so we, we do an analysis on a group and we want to, we want to understand, well, what if you, what's happened so far? And cause we want to create an expectation of, well, what, what, what's possible and how can we create something more predictable for your organization? When you take these, what we might look at as outliers, you know, because People that are on a high cost medication really represent about 5% of the volume, but it's most of the expense. And when we can solve that through procurement, you know, the average ROI that we, that our employers realize is a five, is a five to one. Uh, we've got groups that certainly have been beyond that 10, 15, 20 to one. We love those results. Um, and the average savings, right? If we look at this on a per employee per year, um, model is about is about eleven $1 hundred dollars you know so you know what we can help an organization do is is free up their per employee per year margin by eleven $1 hundred dollars which i don't know of any single activity that an employer could look at to generate that type of impact and certainly a lot of companies today are you know are very you know the cash position is different now than it was a year ago or two years ago and that you know, that freedom in their margin, you know, not isn't just about that number itself, but also the employees, you know, when an employee yeah. works for sharks, they save yeah. between eight, eight to $2,000 a month or a year on their own expenses. And for a lot of employees, that's meaningful dollars, especially if you're in an hourly workforce to, to avoid two, three, four hundred dollars in copays or, or deductibles or co-insurance or these type of items, these cost shares, you know, th this, that's super meaningful for that individual as well. Well, that was for sure. I think the hit that thing that hit home when we worked with the first group, the first employer group uh, to to uh, use sharks, um, one of the comments of the CFO was, well, I, I expected we as a company would save a lot of money, but I had no idea the value of saving my team member or their employee that seven, eight hundred or a thousand or two thousand dollars a year. And that's where we realized, yeah, as an employer or even as a health share, Ash is not going to have this heavy pressure on their needs fund because of these high cost drugs or IVG therapies and that member or that employee 800 a year, a thousand, 2000 a year is real money that allows them to uh, take care of their family, the, the other needs that their family has. So very real and relevant points. So for a, um, for a member or an employer uh, that would, that's wooden sharks is working with their employees. What's, how does, um, one access or gain entry into, if, you know, I know Sharks and Shared Health Alliance have a lot of uh, incredible technology people on our team. Uh, it, how is the technology used and how does one kind of, um, what's the entry point? And it all starts with that, our technology, that cell service platform, because to the individual, right, this is not what they do. And we need to create something that's very simple for that member to engage with with us. And so the first part, especially if we're if we're thinking about the employer audience, is we're really plugged in. We're a part of that health insurance, that pharmacy ecosystem. So we know uh, we're getting daily file feeds from our pharmacy partners. And that allows us to be very proactive in inviting that new member, that new hire, that newly diagnosed individual into the Sharks program because mm -hmm. we're triggered off of how they would use their insurance anyway. We're not having to teach them a new behavior. Uh, we're, we're just kind of called to action as, as we're needed. And so we're going to invite that person into the program. We're already going to have somewhat of their information already ready for them 
because we've gotten that from that from our from the data feeds. And from here, we're asking a few questions about their income situation and you know what what other you know do they have Medicaid or are they a veteran? And so this is a few questions that we get asked that so we want to know those things. They sign our HIPAA release form and that's it. I mean it takes two to three minutes. It is super simple to onboard with our program. And that really is a catalyst for their advocate to begin working on the next step. Great, I have this patient. I know what medications they're on. And we can begin figure out, okay, well, where can we go to access this medication? Once we figure that out, if we're going to go manufacturer or mail order or some other solution, then we can invite that person right back in and say, hey, we, we're going to need this from you. We're going to go to your doctor and get this, this information. And you can stay in touch with us very easily. We can text back and forth. We have a messaging feature in our platform. We can email, we have a phone call. I mean, we, we want to do whatever is convenient for that person, however they like to be communicated with, that's what that's that's our favorite thing to do is say, right, what works for you? And let's do that. Let's stay in touch. Let's keep you informed. And our system is what helps us be efficient and effective at that activity and make it very accessible for it for the patient. So that technology solution becomes the point of entry and creates efficiencies for that employer group for their employees and, and also for Alliance for Shared Health members. And once that person is engaged through the technology, then it, it takes real manpower, I should say so woman power in our case, because we have so many great advocates. Would you talk uh, about maybe some of, some of the team and just what they do every day that is so meaningful uh, in, in the members or that uh, those employees' lives? I that's a great point. You know, it takes great people and empathy um, and experience to make what we do work. And, um, you know, we've got our core advocates and our champ our, that are our individuals that really designed to be the champion for that person, you know, whether that's an individual on you know, an Alliance for Shared Health program or an employer group. You know, we've got teams dedicated for each of those different audiences because they're going to have different needs, different, you know, access, different, you know, expectations. Um, and so we want to make sure we're sensitive to the different needs of that audience. So their advocate is going to be their single person that they communicate with. So, you know, anyone, any outbound phone calls, it'll all, they'll have that consistency in communicating with a single person. And then behind the scenes, there's a lot of work that has to be done to actually fulfill and help this patient get the what they need of going, talking to their doctor, talking to the manufacturer, working with the pharmacy. So we've got specialized individuals that really dedicate and are really great at that at those single tasks to make sure that that they're all taken care of in a very efficient and timely manner. Like many companies, uh, we um, on both sides of our uh, corporation, Shared Health Alliance and Sharks. We utilize Teams, Microsoft Teams. And I don't know about you, but I like to just sit back sometimes and see the interactions with our uh, team members and just the excitement that they have when they get a message from a member about the joy they have when their medication gets filled. Uh, is that, <laughs> are you sitting back doing the same thing from your chair too? Uh, absolutely. I think that's really what we want from a culture perspective is such a, you know, why are we here? Why do we do this? And and we even internally in the office, we've got a bell um, that we, that the advocates ring when we, when we've gotten that medication, if we can get something free for that patient, that is the best outcome we could ever hope for. And we want mm -hmm. that to be celebrated in, internally. And so it, you know, hearing that bell ring numerous times a day, it just creates that you know, wow, we're, we're all productive. We're all moving towards this direction and hearing those success stories and seeing those positive messages and feedback from the individuals. You know, that's, that's what keeps everyone excited and, move, and moving forward. Well, my daughter is a big uh, country music fan. So I, I hear the Garth Brooks song against the grain every now and then. And it makes me, it makes me think of really what we do as, as companies is, you know, we really are going against the grain or, you, you know, kind of, swimming against the current or whatever and those things are are sure challenging but as as a company we know that driving force is how do we help how do we help the member how do we help the employer how do we help the employee get the things we need that they need excuse me and when they get those things um then ultimately we're achieving the success we want to achieve as companies and uh I was wondering a little bit more about the expectation that somebody who um, accesses the program via the technology solution. What should a new employee or a, a new member of, of ASH that's requested help from an advocate um, expect time frame wise how the process works? 
Yep. So once we, um, the once the member onboards, right, that's kind of the step one. Hey, kind of come into the system, let us work on your case, kind of give us that uh, permission to really go to work on your behalf. Once that happens, then the advocate was going to be alerted. And while this happens normally quickly, we like to make sure we have to set expectations that within 24 hours, you know, the advocate's going to invite you back in to do the next step. We're going to, you know, they're going to assign whether you're on one drug, two, 10, 15, 18 different medications, right? We're going to say, great, for each one, what, what are we going to do here? How are we going to help this person? And then we're going to invite that member back in and to, to provide, if there's any documentation that might we might need from that person, we'll provide an easy way for them to upload that or to, you know, kind of click through a very wizard-based process on moving to the next steps. Um, and then from there, you know, we want their part to be, you know, hey, we'll tell you and we'll inform you, we'll keep you updated as progress is made. We're gonna reach out to your doctor because we're gonna need a prescription for this medication. We're gonna, you know, work work on getting that medication filled and you know, give you a timeline, a tracking number of when that when that should show up. But we want that to all be very easy, uh, as easy as possible, because trust there's nothing really else the system offers if you think globally speaking, that that really owns that, hey, let me make this easy for you. And from a PBM perspective or a, a pharmacy benefit management perspective, uh, how does that affect the outcome and does sharks work in the employer space with a lot of different PBM partners? Yeah, I think that, you know, create, having a partnership with the pharmacy manager really helps us plug into what we want to look at just the ecosystem of the health plan itself and saying, how can this be easy? How can we be a first kind of call to action, right? To, to reach out to that new person in need that, you know, that that came onto the plan or, the, or that got a new diagnosis. And then how can we stay engaged and and have that connectivity behind the scenes, have systems access to understand what's going on here? You know, is this patient have access to a certain medication? Are there things that we need that we need to make do on a, you know, sometimes a person may say, Hey, I've only got one day left and they come to us and, and that's their position. So, okay, great. How can we ask the right questions and do what we can to, to ensure that person has, you know, what we might look at as a kind of a bridging situation. Like, you know, what we do does take time working to get scripts from doctors and going to manufacturers. And, and, and if we need, if someone needs a medication right away, how can we help them? And that really is, mm. you know, and the connectivity, the integration, the relationship with our pharmacy benefit management partners is is critical to doing that thing, to saying, hey, how can we help this person and understanding what what's possible for us to do so that our our patients have equal or better access to medication than, than, than they did before? Uh, so in general, a, a member or an employee employee of a company could say, well, an advocate is going to do their best to source a drug uh, in the short run, but sharks from a long term perspective might take four, six, eight weeks sometimes to really fill that med on a long-term basis? I mean, we, we like to set the expectation that it takes us two to six weeks to from the moment you onboard to the moment the medication show up at your door. And a lot of the the difference between the two versus the six weeks are things that we can't control, but we're, we're, we're waiting on someone else to help us. We're waiting on the doctor to write us that script or to fill out some form. And some doctors are really fast. Some doctors are really slow and take a lot of you know, badgering, if you will, to say, hey, we need this, we need this, we need this. Sometimes we need the patient to provide some information. Sometimes it's, you know, the third party, a manufacturer that's, you know, taking their sweet time and how do we speed them along and expedite processes. So, you know, while we do, while we have uh, systems in place to make sure that we're getting things through as fast as we can, at the end of the day, we're relying on other people to do their part in this equation. And that's what you know, either slows us down or makes this go really fast. Yeah, well, that sounds a bit like life a little bit, right? Because we're all, uh, life would be easy if we didn't have to work with people. And one of the beauties <laughs> of life is that we get, if we get to work with people because we are really all are all interdependent. And uh, I know our advocates need, you know, they need everybody else to not disengage everybody from the member to the pharmacy to the provider or whatever. So that's all interesting. And I think important information for somebody to know as they engage in sharks and the awesome things that they do for a member. Uh, if, we're getting close to running out of time here, but as far as the, where do you see this whole prescription world? I know there's lots of talk out there about transparency and uh, trying to get some of these things, whether it's from a hospital perspective, whether it's from a, you know, pharmacy pricing perspective, uh, what's your, what's your mindset on what's going to change, what's going to stay the same, 
And it, is any of it going to really make a difference in the long run? Yeah, I, I, I w- that's a great question. And one we get asked a lot. And I think what an imp- what we have to do as individuals is understand that we have to advocate for ourselves. I have to advocate for my family. You have to advocate for yours. No one's going to do it for you. Your doctor won't. The nurses won't. You do that. And as an employer, you're in the same boat. You know, you have to advocate for yourself or your company for the health plan that you run. The government's not going to do it for you. The insurance companies aren't going to do it for you. Every The system, you know, is operating at a very nice, is operating exactly as it was intended. And they're all making a lot of money and they're not going to voluntarily relinquish that control. And so as an employer, as an individual, you have to make the choice to say, I'm going to do something different so that the, so I can have a better outcome. And relying on the things I've always done, of course, is not going to solve the problem. And first Mm -hmm. realizing that you can, there are things out there that you can do that, you know, you may not have heard of before. And that's really the starting point of realizing I can do something. And, you know, what does that something look like for me? What is it about the prescription world that makes hiding the money or hiding the profit somewhat easy for whether it's the insurance companies or the PBMs or... Uh, the pharmaceutical manufacturers. Yeah, that's that's such a wonderful question, and and it's it, it, that would that in of itself may be its own podcast. So uh, I would <laughs> say the fact that there's so many different people, and if you uh, to understand, there's there's first the supply chain, right, and there's the far, there's the pharmacy companies looking to maximize profits on on what they do. There's the wholesalers that sell to the to the pharmacies. There's the pharmacies and how they interact and how they gobble each other up. And you have big chains and local retails and grocery stores. And it, the dynamics inside of just that system are so different. Then there's the kind of what I you know there's the middlemen in the equation that are the pharmacy managers saying, hey, you know we we want to be in the middle of you know managing these transactions. We want to negotiate discounts and we want to work with pharmacy on rebates and and all. All these activities sound great, but what ends up happening is it is it escalates this issues when you're focusing on the wrong side of the supply problem. Um, and so as you have all these folks saying, hey, how can we make money in this equation? How can we, you know, and, and all of it's at the back of the employer that's saying, wait, but I'm on them. I'm the one paying the bill and everyone else is making money. And, and I'm not even sure where's the value here. And so mm-hmm. that that's really the um, the the realization that until you under, until you come to that realization, you know, I don't know that you're, you're going to start asking the hard questions that need to be asked. Yeah. And I think that that's probably a point of frustration for a lot of employer groups and uh, even some of the members that really go, well, I, these, this, how do I do this? These drugs are so outlandishly expensive. And yet I know that I need these things in order for whoever it is to, to live and, and function on a daily basis. So it, it's certainly a big challenge and one that Sharks has, uh, I, I really, I, I love realizing and seeing how Sharks has developed and what you and Leslie have done and how you've kind of taken this vision and run with it. It's uh, incredibly meaningful. You talk about five to one, 10 to one, 20 to one ROIs. And then on an individual basis, the, the monthly savings, and really it's not even just the savings. It's like all of a sudden I have access to a medication that I didn't to see light at the end of the tunnel or a way to afford that. And I would imagine that's that's really rewarding for you too, Paul. We, we love hearing the stories, having our employer partners share with us what they're hearing from their individuals, the individuals themselves saying, thank you so much for listening to me and helping me through this because I did, you're right. I didn't know what I was going to do because I can't, you know, eat, I couldn't afford my copay, the deductible. We see a lot of folks that, you know, they have insurance and, but they have to meet their deductible before any medication costs are shared. And, you know, they're like, well, I can't afford $900 for for my Victoza or my Trulicity. I can't afford. So I just not, I just won't take it, you know. And then we come along and they're like, oh, now I can afford it. I should take it. And that will prevent me from, you know, I'm now more productive and not going to go to the ER. There's all these downstream implications of, you know, how do we make sure our folks have access And just having insurance doesn't mean you have access to anything. I don't think we've hit on this. And last thing I'll hit on just on the drug expense side and and we'll wrap up is the the IVG therapies or drugs that run through the medical plan and, you know, would otherwise run through an employer's health plan on, I think, what would be called the J-code side or in 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 the health share world, you know, would be billable from, say, a hospital. Um, 
this is a big problem, isn't it? And and some of these therapies are just crazy expensive and still uh, one that Ash, I mean, that, that Sharks helps Ash members and employer groups gain access it, to. You know, a lot of the more expensive, the really expensive medications are hidden from sight inside of a medical, the medical channel, right? So it's not dispensed by a pharmacy that you might see on your pharmacy experience, but instead is is provided by or dispensed by or infused at the doctor's office in a hospital setting. Well, those medications are are quite often easy, equal or more expensive than you know the other medications might be that run through the pharmacy plan themselves. You think about infusions can be ten, twenty five thousand dollars. Uh, you know, a pop, whether you're dealing with something that treats rheumatoid, arth- rheumatoid arthritis or, or ulcerative colitis or Crohn's, or you're dealing with an oncology type medication. I mean, these can be incredibly expensive. And a lot of times that you're, you're oblivious to those, to, to, the, to the cost. And the reality is those are very profitable uh, circumstances to, for, for the infusing provider or facility. We see a lot of times where you know, the same medication that could be accessed at a pharmacy is being billed at and paid three for three times more expensive because of the markup at the provider's office, because that's really a, a pretty profitable thing for them to do. And those are for from a shark's perspective, they're just high cost medications like any other. And what we do is with our pharmacists on staff and our and our team is say, hey, how can we make sure that we've got a, a, a willing provider you know, most doctors want to take care of their patients. And how can we ensure that that the patient has access to that, you know, $10,000 or $25,000 a month type medication? Uh, and there's a someone willing to do that, whether it's home therapy, or, you know, the infusion center that they're that they're at, that's willing to accept that medication coming from coming from an outside source. And those are what we you know, for us, they're, they're a little extra work, but they're definitely worth it because of how impactful you know, that that situation can be for that member and or or that employer. To this day, Paul, I still shake my head in disbelief at, at all of this. And, and so much of it is just I think when we first started with sharks, the objection, the most heard objection from an employer or even a member was, I don't know that I believe you can help me. And nowadays, I, I feel like the sharks team are the they're the people on the on the street corner handing out hundred dollar bills and if somebody else doesn't want to take one you know they're the crazy ones not us anymore <laughs> and uh, i i'm just really grateful i know we thought we hit on this at the beginning but our, our friendship has developed significantly over time and it, it started from a place of would we ever even be able to function together in the same office and now and it's just when we all um realize that we all have different strengths um, different abilities, different unique characteristics. And for me, it's really easy because I, I get to be in this role of how do we find people that are better than me to do the things that I know I'm not good at. And I know you do the same thing in your role as CEO of Shark. So this was, uh, uh, for me, enlightening. I hope it was impactful for our members, but I, I'm, I know you're busy because I know what your day is like. And I appreciate you taking all the time you took to, to share more about sharks and the team and uh, the impact that sharks is having with, for employer groups and for um, Alliance for Shared Health members. Corey, it's my pleasure. I, I never get tired of, of telling our story. And that really stems from the, you know, the passion that that I have, that you have to, to serve others. And it's, you know, w- when you're doing it from that heart and that perspective, it's, you know, I never get tired of talking about it because it's, it's just, it's so much fun. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate that a bunch. And uh, hopefully next time we get together on this, we'll, we'll delve into a little bit more of the prescription world and share some of that, that you already hinted at one of our next podcasts. So one of these days we'll make that happen, but uh, thanks my friend. Hope you have a good day and we'll talk again soon. Thanks so much. I think there are so many great takeaways from a conversation like that. So if I think of a few of those, it would you know start with, okay, uh, how does Sharks help uh, an, an ASH member, a HealthShare member, gain access to a medication? And what's that process? So if you're a member of ASH, that's probably a key point to really hone in on because I think that it can get missed in the translation that there is an access point for these high-cost drugs. And Sharks is a significant solution. I think one of the reasons health share in general is less expensive is because they exclude access to these high-cost medications. Well, in the Alliance for Shared Health 
world who said, well, we, that's not something the health uh, share members are going to pay, pay for or share in. But as part of the vendor programs, there's, a, there's an incredible access point. Uh, second takeaway I'd say is if you're an employer or you're running a company or you're a CFO or you're the HR person, Sharks has become an incredible solution for an employer that's either would like to be self-funded or it's self-funded, but the prescription expenses are absolutely killing the plan from a financial perspective. And you still have a heart for your employees. You want to make sure that they get the medications that they need for for themselves or for their families. You don't want to be in a situation where you say, we're not going to cover these, but you sure want to be in a situation where the employer isn't uh, headed towards some kind of financial ruin or maybe saying I can't do benefits anymore. So if you're an employer that happened to hear this or you know somebody that is and they've got these high cost medications that they're trying to get a handle on, Sharks is an incredible solution uh, to consider. And the, the number of new employer groups that Sharks has gained in a very short amount of time uh, is extremely telling of the results. So those are probably the two primary takeaways. The third is just the heart behind the Sharks team and the advocates these things wouldn't get accomplished without the incredible team that both Leslie and Paul have built at Sharks. And for on the Shared Health Alliance side, we are fortunate that uh, to have Sharks as a vendor solution for our members in the health share world. Uh, we work with a lot of great vendors. You've heard from some of them already on these podcasts. And uh, the, so those are the things that I think about. Boy, that, those are really valuable insights for this conversation. Love what Paul's doing. He's grown so much as a person and you've seen me grow as a person hopefully and it, it's a it's such a great thing to go through life and develop friendships and live life together and go through ups and downs and highs and lows and see uh, people develop and know the heart behind who they are. And and Paul goes, Paul, like any of us, goes through some challenges in his family life with his kids and the medical condition, and they're really thriving because he dug his heels in and said, I'm going to figure this out. He and his wife spent significant time working to figure it out. So I'm proud of Paul. Um, Certainly proud of what Sharks has done and uh, really optimistic that this conversation has, in, has been enlightening to you. And thank you so much for joining us and we'll be with you next time on Running Eyes.